Hello guys, it's Joey, makeupless Joey, enjoy. But uh, I had to come on camera straight away and do the Illumina Tarot reveal, unboxing I guess, uh, as it just arrived. So a few, whew, you can tell I'm excited, breathe. Whew, uh, a few points to make before we started. So I actually ordered the Lumina Tarot from Inner Hue around Halloween, Samhain. Um, it's been kind of a, a tradition that I try out a new tarot deck that I get around Samhain and depending on how I get on with it I may keep it, uh, I may pass it on to someone else and it's kind of been a personal tradition. So I did order this just around or before Samhain and there was a big hold up with the published published printers um, and so it, there was quite a delay uh, and it's only arrived today. However it did take about a week to ship from when she managed to get it out and uh, I did contact and was in regular contact with Lauren Aletta on Facebook who is the creator of the Inner Hue work. I have to say that I am a big, big fan of the original Oracle. I say the original Oracle deck, it was kind of slightly redone of the Oracle deck because I wasn't a big fan of the original, original Lion Strength card and then it was redone and I loved it. Um, but that deck's actually being changed now as well. Uh, I was a little bit sad to see the Fox Heart card is actually going to be changed, um, so I'm really glad I got the original. This, however, is the Tarot and is the second edition, so there should be some changes of of cards in here um, and I really wanted to unbox with you and show you. So first thing is this gorgeous card. Look at this. Look look at this thing. This 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 card is just throwing words incorrectly out my mouth. It's so pretty. Um, and she's actually written me a note and it said um, thank you for your patience and support. Now I love the Oracle deck. It is my favourite or <laughs> <laughs> it is my favorite favorite oracle deck i may have to um have i got any left no um side note oh so pretty right that's enough of that but um i thought i had some left in there but i don't so water it is excuse me one moment i'm gonna breathe breathe right anyway <laughs> So it arrived, look at this. So not only is this gorgeous card, oh, oh, it's so beautiful, so beautiful. So I thought we'd unbox together with the little inner his sticker. Oh, oh, black tissue paper, mwah. I'm going to very carefully unwrap this down here. You can hear me. Oh, goodness. Because um, I can use black tissue paper. I love black tissue paper. Right, and then we have some bubbly wrap. Now, I've got my little uh, Stanley knife over there, just in case. I think I might actually use that just to ease this tape off. Ease the tape off. Come on. Carefully, carefully. I don't want any rips. I've been waiting for this. Right, okay. Gently, gently. And there we go. So this is a big box. It's of a it's a cardboard, it's a medium kind of firmness. It's got the beautiful uh, Lumina Tarot and then inner hue labeling upon it. Oh goodness. Right. So you then open. So first and foremost, there is a tarot bag in this. That is, that is unique. I don't think I've ever had a tarot set with that in. Um, and then, oh goodness, there's an Ouroboros in here. Sorry, look at the back of the box with the Ouroboros, love. Uh, so then you have the Lumina Tarot booklet. Hmm. I will sh actually I won't do that yet. I'll uh, show you one of the meanings for the cards once we've had a look at the cards together uh, because I haven't seen the new cards in here and I don't want to spoil it. 
Right, so we will take the plastic wrap off and we will see what we will see. That's interesting. The first thing on the very top is a little in a hue card. Let your intuition guide you. You are what you have been looking for. Isn't that cool? It's cool. Right, so I initially was hesitant about trying this deck because there are humanoids in this deck. And if you've been with me for any length of time, you know that uh, I prefer non-humanoid decks, be it animal decks, uh, sort of a more surreal element. I get on quite well with the Mary L, which has humanoid forms in it, but they tend to be ethereal gods, deities, and so on and so forth. But we shall see what we shall see. So the Fool is actually quite pretty. I really like the, the dough and the colour in the background. I'm wondering if that's one of her symbols or if it's an alchemy symbol that I don't recognise. Let's have a look, actually, now we've seen the first card and see about the deck. A few ways of getting in contact with your intuition. New moon and full moon insights, a few examples of spreads, discussing the different suits and the shadow. Okay, it doesn't actually say, but you get about this, this sort of little booklet of information about the card. Now what I will say is I think that Inahu does some beautiful uh, interplays of colour, especially when you compare the cards to one another. So you have the Magician and the Fool side by side, and they almost look like they are intimately connected with the circles behind, but you can obviously tell there is a great deal of difference. Now, now that's a Mercury symbol on him, so maybe this one on... The full card is an alchemy symbol that I just don't recognise. There's something... Do you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of The Magician's The Show, actually. A TV show. So, I, I can dig it. I always worry a little bit about humanoid imagery. See, this one I'm not overly keen on. I like the Empress, she's humanoid but she's awesome and there's a bee. Again look at the interplay of colour here, with her being black and white, uh, graphic art, pencil, stencil almost, and then all the, the brightness of colour, I'm trying to get me out of the shop so it will focus. <laughs> so we'll probably go through all the major arcana, and that's the Emperor. I do like the hero font. I love the skull and then the colours around the back. That's awesome. Uh, the lovers may be one of my favourites. Look at the wolfies. Oh, so pretty. I love it. I love the kind of um, watercolour effect as well on the top and bottom. I mean, uh, that harkens back to my deep love for the wild unknown because that's typified from, or sort of originated from in my mind. So there's actually, that's interesting, there are three horses for the chariot and then the triple moon goddess in dark. That's very, in eclipse, that's very interesting. I like that image a lot, that's very interesting. Or well, I like justice. More skulls, skulls and hearts, balanced on the sword. I, I like this image, um, how she stood on the sword um, and then you've got this almost... Why am I making me think of Diwali? Is that even the right... Let me check something. I'm sorry to be all over the place in this video. I was very excited and now I've just had this 
thought and I want to check it. So looking at it, it made me think of um, Diwali, which is a festival of lights. That's why, because a lot of the um, the henna is actually done in little little dots as they um, decorate the artwork. So there you go. That's an interesting little correlation that went through my mind with the ellipsis. The infinity symbol. Oh, the hermit's a woman. Wonderful. The hermit is often associated with Virgos, so I like that a lot. Um, and I think that's a tree native to America because that's not one I... America, Australia, because that's one I don't recognise. So that's really wonderful, like a little bit of her homeland in the... Wheel of Fortune, it's a little bit more of a sort of a Kali image. Um, I like the contrast of the planet and the wheel um, and, and the moon faces around it. I'm not entirely sure about the figure. I, again, I'm not the biggest fan of humanoid figures. See, for me, I would have rather strength had been more lion. I love the colour in the background. The Hanged Man I do like. Oh, I do like. He's got an escape artist. He's got bats. Look at him. Isn't he amazing? I like that card a lot. It's possibly my favourite so far. Oh, hello. The death card meets with approval. Look at this. Look at this. Wow. Wow, I'm feeling it. This is an intricate image. Um, you've got like the rose here and then it's like cut pieces of snake skin with things growing out of it, like f branches and, and plants growing out of it. But the snake's still very much alive and it's like rebirth from shedding of skin. Oh my, I love. Now, it's very important to me that the Death card is a good, good card because it's my favourite card in the tarot. I know, I'm weird. Um, so that's wonderful. Temperance is lovely. Temperance makes me think of um, the artist Curly, actually, whom I love. And I love this almost air, water bender, fire bender energy going on. That's awesome. I like the arm placement, actually as well. The, the arm placement here is, is perfection. I love it. Oh, that's very well done as well. The devil card. Uh, there are poppies and it's uh, a shadow and he's kind of... <sighs> he almost looks like an ink blot. It's uh, very difficult to determine his physical shape preying on fears, that sort of thing, and is uh, often defined by what we think something evil would look like. I like that card a lot. Oh, I like the tower as well. See, um, this again, this is what I mean for non-humanoid images, uh, appeal to me a lot more. We've got a raven, we've got a lightning bolt, um, a tower of stones and some mushrooms. Uh, this, this appeals to me completely. Like, if the whole deck was like this, it would be it would be vying for my favourite deck. Um, it's just humanoids. So that's the star. So I've just said, <laughs> I've just said I wish it was more like that. I wish there was something more going on in this card. I like the colours. The colours are very Twilight-esque. Um, and stars within stars. I'd like... <laughs> I would have liked a little more going on in that card, personally. I don't know. Maybe I'm a hypocrite. Okay, so I actually do like, um, quite like this, even though this is a humanoid as well, uh, the moon. 
something very priestessy about it, almost gypsy about it as well. It's lovely. And then the sun, the sun's lovely. A bit less humanoid, bit more of a focus on hands and the opening up of hands and the sort of embracing of the sun going on here. That's gorgeous. I love the, the artwork of the geometric pattern as well surrounding the sun. I love that, that's cool. Ooh, now judgment's a powerful card. Oh, I'm feeling judgment. My goodness, look at this card. Look at this eclipse going on. Wow. That is a potent card. That might be the most potent judgment card I have ever seen. That's impressive. And I love the world as well. The world has a death head moth on here and we know how I feel about moths and Bave in particular and I've got the moth behind me that uh, Molly sent me and uh, so basically it's right up my alley. It's in an egg which I also adore, cosmic egg energy and all that life contained within it. I love it, that's cool. Ooh, Ace of Wands looks like Harry Potter. <laughs> which I've just been talking about. Sorry, I wasn't going to go through them all, but um, look at that. That's a Harry Potter wand. <laughs> right, I'm going to go, go through them down here now and show you the best ones. I like Four of Wands. Four of Wands is a crystal grid. I like that a lot with the kind of flower of life. Ooh! Five of Wands has stags butting heads on, which I kind of like that symbolism. I do like a lot of these actually. Um, that's the Seven of Wands with a scaraby beetle. I'm not, it's a stag beetle actually. It's a stag beetle, that's the right word, sorry. Uh, oh wow, no, Nine of Wands is like. Like He-Man, like Power of Grayskull going on. That's that's some powerful card right there. <gasps> that was nine, sorry, did I say seven? Hello, hello, look how beautiful. Hello, Ten of Wands. Ten of Wands is a definitely a joyful card for me now. Look, who's the fuck? Oh, goodness. You are gorgeous. Oh, and the Maiden of Wands has a fox as well, but do they all? Oh, they all do. Oh, well, we'll have to show. Right. Maiden, fox, knight. Now, I like the idea of this card. I think the head is needed to be a little bit further back. Do you know what would have made this card slightly better? In my opinion, which it's just my opinion and... You know, it's just, I can't draw to save my life, so I think he's, he should have been veiled, like, completely. Like, the, the, the mask should have been, like, right down and maybe just see his chin. That would have been how I would have said to do it, but... Oh, oh look, there's a sleepy fox! Sleepy fox? Oh, no! Now, just, um... Point of reference, um, the Queen of Wands is how I identify myself in tarot readings. Um, so the fact there's a fox there is really tickling me, it's wonderful. Um, and then a very dapper gentleman for King of Wands. I like the colour and the use of the colour on that card as well. Ooh, I think we will definitely do all the aces because I think the aces are important. Ace of Cups is free beautiful you see this again this interplay of color and um, graphical design here is gorgeous the black and white versus that color there is just I feel this card and of course the symbol is supposed to be water and inside the cup and oh I feel it I feel it So I like Three of Cups as well, I've got some dragonflies. 
I like the sort of nighttime colours or cosmic colours behind in the cups as well. That's lovely. Look at four, look at four of cups. You see this colour into play? Uh, you see how up here? Come on, focus for me, please. Right. So there is this bright, vibrant colour, and then down here is kind of like the reversal, like the getting rid. That's clever. That's clever. Oh well, there's a crow on this card, so we're going to have to show five of cups. Look at this. When you see, this is what I mean. Like this, if this, this is the again the animal side of um, the inner hue stuff, which is why I love the oracle cards so much because they're all animal based. But look how strong this is as a five of cups. The red thread and then the raven holding onto one bit, and it's all tied around the cups, and the cups make a pentacle. That is some strong imagery. That is amazing. And, and again, like the, the judgment was strong imagery. Ooh, seven of cups. Snicky snake. It's a strong image, as is eight of cups, which um, is a little bit more of a desolate card, but again, lack of humanoid, and they become incredibly strong to my mind. Well, they connect with me better. It's not it's stronger or weaker necessarily, it's just I prefer it. Ten of Cups is Butterflies. So Maiden of Cups is, is it, yeah, it's the Ouroboros Snake. Um, this was is an image that is often used to, to advertise it and it's not my favourite. But I like the colour interplay. I actually think the Knight of Cups is way stronger as a humanoid card. Like if I put them side by side I think his image is like way stronger. Um, I like the reflectiveness of his pose. Uh, he's open and vulnerable, but yet still a little guarded at the same time. I love the colour inside the Ouroboros here, with like a moon in the background affecting the water in the foreground. I think this is a much stronger image. And the Queen of Cups is freaking beautiful. Free, wow. She reminds me of Freya, which is probably a sign for me to uh, get working on some Freya stuff, which I have to do. But I love the inverse image. I love the snake between. I love the cup. That That's Freya. That's what Freya looks like, to my mind. The goddess Freya, the Nordic goddess Freya, who makes me bleed. Oh, the King of Cups is a bit of a... Hello. <laughs> With the snake round his hand, I like that. It's neat. I quite, I like that. Ooh, the ace of, the ace of swords. So I said I would do all the aces. Oh goodness, the two of swords is gorgeous. Um, so this is the ace of swords. It's a lovely interplay of watercolor again to make it look very. I, it looks like the air, it looks like, you know, the element air, but kind of in an ethereal way. And I really like the strong geometric lines behind it, which kind of give it a sharpness. I think that's very clever. Like the interplay that she does with her shapes and her colours, just spot on. Now, exactly like this. Oh, goodness. Look at this. Look at this card with the... Is, oh, are they hawks? I think they're hawks. Um, a hawk up the top. Please, please focus. The two swords in between and all the colours like dripping between the two. I, oh. And then you've got the four of swords which has a portal theme going on and the swords have become like tree-like with leaf. Look at this. This is such a, it's abstract but it's so full of meaning. This is what I mean. Sometimes her cards are just and we've got another death head moth. Five of swords. He's being hung. Not entirely sure about this, but uh, yeah, I like I like it. I like the imagery. Oh, oh, the noises I make. Honestly, look, look at that. And the swords become the trees. Oh, Ooh, the nine of swords. Also that.
very interesting. Very interesting. The Ten of Swords has a vulture. Maybe they're falcons, not hawks. I think they might be falcons, because I can see a bit clearer on the Maiden of Swords. I'm feel I, f I feel it because it's kind of got again it's got a very she feels quite Nordic to me, and I love the the it's, I'm pretty sure it's a falcon actually. Um, it will probably say in the books and I'll because I haven't in the books in the book uh, uh, which I haven't read yet. But um, yeah, she looks like she belongs on Vikings, which is back. Yay. Oh, I love the Knight of Swords for that unusual kind of circus-like, but still rigid. That's his falcon. I like that, and how the card is half light, half dark. Her interplay of colour and light is amazing. Um, I love that positioning with him. I think that's very clever. I, I can get behind that. Queen of Swords. Very sort of forthright and just as is. And then the King of Swords does look a little bit like a uh, like a mafia gangster. <laughs> I wouldn't mess with him. Right, the Ace of Pentacles. Mm. Mm. Now I liked her other hand card. I'm not thrilled with this one. I think that's the weakest of the aces, which is a shame because pentacles often is. And I always feel that when people make... See, the second one and the third one and the fourth one and the fifth one are all beautiful. So we will show you this. I mean, look look at this. This is the two of uh, pentacles. Now, this looks like something out of a, a botanical sort of... You know how you get artistry based on botanical design? That's what that looks like. And then this... You see the difference to my mind. This is more pentacles. Um, and then you have the three of pentacles, um, which has a budding, could be an oak leaf growing out of a seed. Look at this. Look at this beautiful interplay with pentacles and the colours around the two intersecting circles and the shapes and the idea of growth through the triangle. This is beautiful. Um, and then, even more beautiful, the four. Look at the colour in this card with the B at the centre. And again, you've got a flower of life symbol. And the, um, I don't know how well you can see, I imagine you can. There are pentacles in black and it kind of creates like a compass with the B at the centre. This is an amazing card. These, And again, five of pentacles with this kind of um, half half uh, rotted but also turning into fertilizer apple going on this is clever and again now we have the six of pentacles which brings the hands back in and i don't feel this i was just like <sighs> seven limbs doesn't fill me full of confidence for six of pentacles now seven pentacles is lovely it's a cactus um, I wasn't going to show all of them, was I? But um, it's kind of making a point. The eights. See, the nine's beautiful as well. And the ten's a bear. And it's all bears now for all. Oh, but the ten's gorgeous. So the. Oh, sh sh maiden. Oh, look at this bear! Look! Oh, <laughs> there he goes. Look at him. Look! Oh, look at the bear. I love this image. Um, the green is a nice shade of green. I'm not the biggest fan of green as a colour, but that has a lovely sort of um, lighter mint tone. She's got this kind of breath of life and connecting to nature energy going on. Um, I like the pose and the kind of gratefulness of it. I think that's great. The Knight of Pentacles is pretty interesting. I, I, I like the pentacle at his feet, the artistic design. Um, I'm not entirely sure about the Queen of Pentacles. She looks like she needs sandwich, to be honest with you. Um, so the Queen of Pentacles is obviously off home and hearth, um, and she looks bone thin. 
on the top half. That's mm, I'm mm. and then the King of Pentacles is awesome. So there you go. So there we go. I'm not sure which cards are different. I don't know because uh, I didn't get the original. Um, I was hesitant to um, because of, like I said, um, I'm not a humanoid card person. Some of these are really nice with their humanoid forms. Um, and some of the, like this, this card right here with a humanoid form is gorgeous. Um, whereas like the queen, really, she looks quite ill to me. Um, which is an unfortunate impression to have and is probably going to make me think of that every single time and maybe, I don't know, that's, un that's an unfortunate thought to have had about that card but um, I actually think that the strength of the inner hue is where the animal cards are and I hope she does another deck and I hope it is purely animals or a mixture of animals and abstract and plays on her strengths which is definitely the incredible interplay between colour and geometric design and shade and light. I mean some of these cards with their, their interplay of light, they, I mean I'm not kidding when I say I think and in fact let's go as far as to say that the judgment card, let me go find it, Uh, did I go the wrong way? I did. I went the wrong way. Hang on. The judgment card is the most impactful, the best judgment card I think I've ever seen personally. That I, uh, this is my favourite judgment card that I have ever seen. I would even pick this above the wild unknown judgment card because I love this. This is, this is perfect. Um, I think it has a strong, um, interplay with regards to what spiritual messages are found in eclipses. I think it has a strong interplay of what like ancient people thought what was happening when uh, uh, was e eclipses. They were afraid it was a judgment day, literally, you know, doom, end of all times. This is an amazing interplay of light and dark and what who we are in the shadow and who we are without the sun and who we are um, when we are veiled and masked. This is an incredibly powerful card. This is an amazing, amazing interpretation. So, um, I mean, it's just going to be me with my humanoid thing that I just, I don't tend to like humanoid cards in tarot decks. But overall, I freaking adore this deck. I support in a hue uh, Lauren Aletta's work completely. Her Oracle deck is my favourite Oracle deck, hands down, that I have ever bought. Uh, it's just amazing. Every single card is like, mm -hmm. so I really wanted to have the companion. Um, the box is really, really cool. Um, and you've got your kind of somewhere to store it for life. Uh, it's a good, it's a good sturdiness. It's not like indestructible. So you still want to take care of it and you get a little tarot bag. So just to, last but not least, I guess we can talk about the cardstock a little bit. Um, it's a good firm cardstock. It's, um, a little bit, whoop. It's a little bit more flexible. It's not a th thick. It's got a nice matte finish. It's not too shiny. I'm not a big fan of the overly shiny card, so I like this finish. Um, and it has her design on the back, same as the Oracle cards. And I like the back, black back. I think that gives it a, a good finish. Um, it's not distracting when you're shuffling, that sort of thing. So there you go. This judgment card has blown my socks off really seriously um, and this fox is which is you know gets my immediate seal of approval so that is the Lumina Tarot and is available from Inner Hue uh, the Inner Hue Big Cartel I think is the website I will try and remember to link it somewhere um, if not that's what the website is okay many blessings <laughs>